Have you ever thought to yourself, I want to play a deck that starts a turn with a relatively empty board, then puts up 15 to 20 points of damage all in one crazy burst that leaves the opponent sitting there totally wide-eyed? Well, if you haven't, I'm guessing you're considering it now. Introducing the Is It Aggro or Is It Phoenix deck from Guilds of Ravnica Standard. This red-blue deck takes a collection of misfit cards or cards that wouldn't be played in basically any other competitive deck, adds them to a few standard staples, and produces a deck powerful enough that one variation was actually the top performer at the GRN Pro Tour. Also worth mentioning that there were two versions of this deck out of the top four slots of the constructed event there. So how does this deck work? Well, there are two basic win conditions. The first, in alignment with the deck's namesake, is to beat the opponent down with a continued resilient phoenix threat, constantly re-emerging from the graveyard turn after turn. The second is to drop a massive drake and run the opponent over with a crazy single turn damage swing. Aside from these threats, the deck runs a collection of low cost card draw and cycling spells with a touch of burn that allow the player to continually refill their hand while casting spells to trigger phoenix's ability. It's worth mentioning that there are Is It Aggro decks without Phoenix, but the card choice changes quite a bit to realign the synergies more towards those specifically appropriate for Niv Mizzet and the Drakes. And keep in mind, there are numerous variations of the deck list for the Phoenix deck as well, some with alternative win conditions like Mirari Conjecture and Murmuring Mystic. Now, the list we've opted to profile includes no Goblin Electromancers, and instead more one-drop red draw spells. In the Electromancer version of the deck, these red cycling spells are typically subbed out for Radical Ideas or Discovery, where the extra mana cost to play those cards is a non-issue thanks to Electromancer's ability. Now, unlike most aggro decks, this one doesn't have some hyper-aggressive turn 1 or 2 set of creatures to play. In fact, the lowest converted mana cost among creatures for the version of the deck we've been playing is 3. Instead, the deck generally spends the early turns setting up and relies on an insane burst potential in the mid-game, as it puts out crazy amounts of damage from what would otherwise look like a rather weak or unthreatening board state. One other card that makes the burst possible is Maximize Velocity. Although it's not run in every version of the deck, this one mana sorcery speed spell has ended more games completely unexpectedly than we can remember. It synergizes very well with the discard spells like Charter Course and Tormenting Voice when there is no Phoenix Descent to the Yard, and when played on a mid to late game Drake, in most cases it just ends the game. Based on this, our decklist runs a playset of Maximize Velocity, which sit alongside Crash Through, Warlord's Fury, and Opt in the one drop slot, each designed to draw cards, although Crash Through can come into play as a game ender as well. Can't forget Shock as well, which is chosen here over Lightning Strike as a means to ensure it can be cast with two other spells to trigger our Phoenix's ability. In the two drop slot, we've got play sets of Charter Course and Tormenting Voice. These cards are critical for maintaining our hand while also placing Phoenix in the yard. And you'll see two Lava Coils, great for the mirror, not to mention most other matchups with any creature based threats. The 4 damage hits most early to mid-game creatures in the format, and the Exile represents a key way to eliminate some of the reoccurring threats. Then we're on to creatures. 4 Enigma Drakes, 4 Crackling Drakes, and 4 Phoenix round things out. The mana base is fairly simple with 4 Sulphur Falls, 4 Steam Vents, 5 Mountains, and 5 Islands. We can get away with only 18 lands thanks to the draw ability of the deck. As a general rule, we saw more games ended with a single big Drake swing than with Phoenix pressure, and in the games we played, we found more often than not we were using the Phoenix as blockers in the aggro matchup, buying time to land a massive Drake. Some of the hardest decision making was when to cycle or draw cards when Phoenix wouldn't be triggered. For example, deciding whether to cast, say, a Tormenting Voice and an Opt on turn 3, when we wouldn't be able to cast a third spell to activate Phoenix, but could still cycle through 3 cards in our deck versus not doing anything. In those instances, we found that doing so made sense if we needed to find our next land, but otherwise, Patience was a superior option generally. Well, we hope you enjoyed this classic deck review for Arclight Phoenix, and if you're interested in seeing full uninterrupted gameplay, be sure to check the video description, which will link you to our channel for more MTGA content. Thanks again for watching.